Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah for another opportunity to gather, another opportunity to wake this day. Let's rewind it back. I saw a statistic that was showing the number of births that happen per day and the number of deaths that happen per day. So we thank Allah that He gave us another opportunity to uh, another day which is filled with opportunities. Allahumma lakul ham wa lakul shukr. We thank Allah for that. I was thinking, mashaAllah, of a topic for today, and I saw uh, Brother Sundiata's post. How can you judge a man? How can you try to judge a man if you have not walked in his puma? And then he has a second line, my amigos say first he created the pen and they call it La Pluma. And then he said, we thank Allah for blessing us with another Jumu'ah. And his poem continues. But I was thinking about this in the context of love. And this idea of judging someone or understanding someone at a deeper level unless or how can we do that without having a relationship with them to understand and see through the lens in which they see, try to experience through the lens in which they experience. And I'm taken back to this point that if we don't establish those external relationships, then I would say that's okay. But the relationship that we cannot afford to continue to manifest itself in our lives is one which is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives. And I think about that in the context of three stages of love. The love of Allah brought us here. Listen to that. The love of the creator of the heavens and the earth and every animate and inanimate object from the time of Kun until the time that the trumpet will be blown, his love brought us here. And his love sustains us while we are here. With all of our shortcomings, with all of our faults, with all of our defects, Alhamdulillah. It's the attribute of forgiveness, it's the attributes of mercy, it's the attribute of lutf, it's the attribute of afu, it's the attribute of his gentleness, it's the, it's the attribute of his uh, overlooking our shortcomings, it's the attribute of his mercy, it's the attribute of, and we can continue to go on, that sustains us and keeps us here. And it is his love that will bring us home. It is His love that will bring us home. Spoiler alert, this is not home. This is not home. And the reason why I was thinking about this because I was reflecting on this oft-mentioned hadith that when a man comes to the Prophet ﷺ and asks him, when is the hour? When is the hour? And he replies to him, what have you prepared for it? That's the wisdom of a teacher who wants to see good for you and not just pontificate what they think you should be doing to show the knowledge that they have which may be superior to yours. No. The ball is right back in your court. The onus is right back on you. If you ask me that question, there's a bigger reality to it which is we have to meet Allah. That's what that question is. So what have you prepared for it? Nothing. Except for that I love Allah and I love you. Now the scholars say that the man either was articulating from a place of absolute humility and saying that I haven't done anything in my life worthy to even mention. Or they say that given the shortcomings in his life, by mentioning this of his love for Allah and the love of the Messenger, when that ember, 
if you've made a fire before, that little spark that's in there that you can continue to blow on and blow on and create oxygen and that it will turn into a blaze of a flame of iman and of faith, that those two things will guide you to those righteous actions which you believe are missing in your life. Nothing except for I love Allah and I love His Messenger. And who from amongst us can sit here right now and claim I don't have the ability to love Allah and to love His Messenger in the highest levels? If we don't have the intellectual capacity, then we will not be held to that standard by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because one of the conditions to be held by it is that one must be aqil, must have sound intellect. So if that's the case, then you won't even be judged on that. But if you do, then it's wide open. It's wide open. And perhaps we're thinking about it in a different way. Perhaps it is that I'm waiting for that love to be established so I can do those righteous actions. But maybe it's by doing those righteous actions that will bring the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into our hearts. And through the gratitude of being afforded the opportunity to do those actions, then that is the increase when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about. That if you show gratitude, وَلَا إِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ And that if you show gratitude to me, then I will increase you. Then I will increase you. But what is that, what is that increase? What first and foremost, if we establish that, that increase is love. Love that you gave me the ability to worship you. Love that you inspired me to ask you. Love that I know that I can count on you. Love that I know that you will never abandon me. Love that I know that you will give me what you have promised in this world and in the next. It's a win-win. It's a win-win. So when I think about this guidance of this deen, at the essence of it is this foundation of love. And I'm not talking about this kind of flowery, you know, unicorns and rainbows and butterflies and rose petals. No, but a love, a love that will make us do things that we thought we could never even do. A love that will make us do things that we thought we were never able to do. Motivated by what? Motivated by a love for Allah and His Messenger. And, and to me, it's powerful when, when the Prophet ﷺ talks about it and, and creates this metaphor for us that when the person has tasted the sweetness of faith, when the person has tasted the sweetness of faith, they will no more be desirous to be flung into the fire than they will to give up on their faith. No longer or no more want or, be, or give up this idea of being flung into the fire than to give up my faith. Do what you will. I'm not letting go of this. And how does this love then manifest itself into our lives? In the interest of time, I'm going to read just a little bit of the first fi ikhtilaf, which there always is, difference of opinion, whether or not this was the first khutbah of the Prophet ﷺ. But some say that this is the first narration where he says that, O oh, you who believe, the best speech is that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one is truly successful whose heart Allah has adorned with love of his book. So first, establishing that love of Qur'an. I tell you right now, in front of you right now, all of you, that I am muqassir, full of shortcomings in my relationship with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, full disclosure. 
And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase that as is indicated as a means to draw an adornment of love in the heart of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now I know that there's a path. How do I bring that love into my life? Love his book. I'm not going to love that book if I am away from that book. Message to myself, note taken. And whom after disbelief, Allah has caused to enter into submission to him. Now obviously he's addressing this first nation, which were all converts, but have come from this level of disbelief into belief. But maybe there's been some time that I've had some crisis where I've questioned my faith. That's okay. You're not the first and you certainly won't be the last. But the fact that it brings us here is an affirmation of faith in our hearts. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Imanu ma waqara fil qalb al amal. That faith is the thing which establishes itself in the heart and the limbs testify to it, i.e. it brings you to Juma. i.e. it helps you to press that comforter off you in the morning to get up for Fajr. It helps you to show up and be a member, an active member of your community. That's what faith is. Ma waqara fil qalb, at whatever level it is, it establishes itself in the heart and the limbs testify to it, i.e. their feet will carry you to where is pleasing to Allah. The hand will reach to what is pleasing to Allah. The eye will look at what is pleasing to Allah. The ear will listen to what is pleasing to Allah. But that foundation is love. He, sallallahu alayhi wa continues by saying, love that which Allah loves. Love that which Allah loves. Just choose, choose, choose something. Choose something. What is it when you read the Quran that speaks out to you? What is it that you hear inside of the hadith? What is it that you see inside of the seerah? What is it that you see from the lives of the companions? Or whatever it is. Pick out that thing and that you know that Allah loves it. In the law you hibbu, and there's a khutbah that I gave just two weeks ago, a whole category of people. In the law you hibbu al muhsinin, in the law you hibbu al muttaqin, in the law you hibbu. Oh, Allah, Allah loves those who bring uh, a beauty into the world, al muhsinin. Allah loves the people of taqwa, al muttaqin. Allah loves. Find that category and ask myself, where do I slot in in this? Am I creating beauty into the, in this and bringing beauty into this world? Or first and foremost, let's not be so big and ask and have those aspirations. How about in my house? How about in my house? Am I beautifying and adorning my house in a manner in which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala would love? Someone asked me, they said, you know, the easiest way to answer that question is if the Prophet ﷺ would come to visit you today, what would he think of how you run your house? That's the test. That's the test. Do we need some preparation? I'm not ready yet. Put that in the closet. Get the broom out. Yalla, empty the dishwasher. You can laugh. Love which Allah loves. And then, don't let it be compartmentalized, he says, and love Allah with all your hearts. And love Allah with all your hearts. Now that's a stage to get to. Sometimes we hear that and we say, well, how do we do that? How do we do that? But how, in my broken self right now, could I get up and run a marathon? It would be what? Incrementally. Incremental. Incre this man has built a whole career off of the 1% rule. This man has a whole career now saying that all you need to be is incrementally 1% better every day. And he built a whole career and he has all kinds of people listening to him now just by saying you have to be better 1% each day. What does that 1% look like in our lives? What does 1% of more love in my life for Allah and His Messenger look like? Is it one more and you fill in the blank of whatever that is? But the idea is that we're constantly moving forward. 
and we're not moving back. <coughs> this is something here that I think is really interesting. He said, grow not weary of hearing the word of Allah. Grow not weary of hearing the word of Allah. And do not stop remembering him and do not let your hearts grow hard to him. MashaAllah. This verse I want to mention here because this is the thing that becomes problematic real quick. When Allah says, Ya Yuladina Amanu, Man Yartud Minkum and Dinihi, for so for yet till he be home and you hibbuhum, or you hibbunu. The Allah Smullah says in the Quran, O oh, you who believe, the one who returns back, who leaves this deen, Allah will bring another people whom He loves and whom love Him. So the idea is we are not, we are, there is no loss for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we are in or if we are out. And the onus is on us. To the degree that we will be in, is it a degree in a manner that pushes us forward or is it a degree in a manner that brings us back? Remember that 1%, just 1% every day. What does that 1% look like? In Alhamdulillah, Hamdun Kathir and Kama Amar, we shall only Ida Hailallah, we shall unless Aida Muhammad and Abduhu Rasulahu, Ibadullah, with Ekurukum Bitakullah, his Subhan, who were to Allah, with Ekurukum Bikoli, he said, Muhammad and Sallallahu, who are they were Allah, Sahu Sam Haithakul Fil Hadith, it Takullah, he said, Akuntum, with Ekurukum Bishaf and McCann Mustafa, Sallallahu, who are they were Allah, Sahu Sam, Haithakullah, some to Allah, the Quran Kareem, yeah. يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك أنت حميد مجيد شاط على we'll close out with just some thoughts here of this this love maybe some 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 KPIs, some key performance indicators that we can think about. What are they? How do I measure this in my life? This love should increase us in striving in a manner, as we said earlier, in a way that Allah loves. Increasing, challenging. Let each other compete with one another. What are some things? What's a standard that I'm looking for? We all have it in every other aspect of our lives. What about Dean? Am I looking at a person who is doing more than me in Dean? Or do I look at a person who's doing left so I can feel, mashallah, I can feel better than them? So I'm going to use my ego to propel myself forward at the expense of someone else. That's not our deen. That's the ego. <clears throat> but what we want to do is to be people that when that love is there, like Allah has put that love in that person's heart and they're doing more than me, I want to get to that station of love. And then also to seek. Right? To seek. And as I said, this is that idea of, you know, never being content with who we are. Never being content with who we are. Always pushing forward. Always looking for a better version of myself, of how I could have said that, or how I could have understood that, or how I could have held back my anger, or how I could have held back my jealousy, or how I could have held back any of the blameworthy character traits that are inside of here. It's real. 
And then one day, two days, three days, four days. And then next thing you know, it becomes a habit. Because there's other habits that form as well too. And if we don't break those, those habits become who we are. This love, really, I feel, and this is, a, this, is, this is to myself, you all ain't even here right now. This is to myself. Is acknowledging our mortality and to put in front of me this meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That it's real. That it's real. Just as my Uncle Paul used to say, all I got to do is stay black and die and pay my taxes. It's real. This idea that we're all going to move from beyond this. As I said at the beginning of the khutbah, this is a spoiler alert. This ain't home. But look at this. Look at this. An Ubadah ibn Samit, radiallahu anhu, that the Prophet said, Whoever loves to meet Allah, Allah will love to meet him. Whoever loves to meet Allah, Allah will love to meet him. And whoever hates to meet Allah, Allah will hate to meet him. So Aisha, radiallahu anha, or one of the wives of the Prophet asked, Ya Rasulullah, we all dislike the idea of death. And he said, Ya Aisha, it's not what you're thinking. He said, when death approaches the believer and he is given the glad tidings of Allah's pleasure and honor, nothing will be more dear to him than what lies ahead of him. So he will love to meet Allah and Allah will love to meet him. And when the person who has rejected faith and has turned away and aggressed towards, this, towards our deen, approaches death he is given the news of Allah's displeasure and his punishment and nothing will be more disliked by him and nothing I'm sorry and nothing will be more disliked by him than what lies ahead of him so he will hate to meet Allah and Allah will hate to meet him Sahih Bukhari so as we said the onus is on us if that foundation of love is established, then we'll take it back to another hadith, which is a hadith Qudsi, where the Prophet said that Allah says, Ana dhani abdi bi. I am as my servant thinks I am. I am as my servant thinks I am. And so what does that say? The work is yours. I'm here for you. Love me. Have these expectations of forgiveness from me. Look for my pardon. Know that I'm here from you. Know that I never break my promise. Know what I've done to nations before this. Know what I have done to the most lowest of the low in society and raise them to the highest of the high. Know that I've taken the most highest of the high in society and raised and debased them and made them the most lowest of the low in society. Whatever you want in that whole formula, whatever is in your heart, that's what I am for you. That's what I am for you. So may Allah give us the ability to fiqh the divine uh, uh, blessings and divine assistance to build a foundation that is based on love but a love that is real and a love that takes us to the reality that I am going to die not in a morbid sense but the fact that it's reality and inshallah that reality will make all of our relationships with other people even better. Because I know that maybe I won't see you tomorrow. And I need to make amends right now. Maybe that thing that I've been holding in my heart to tell you that I forgive you and that I love you needs to come out because I've really, now I've acknowledged my own mortality. I ain't going to be around forever. Our relationship with our children or our parents or whomever it is,
If it is based on love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then let that outpouring of love come into all that we do. Allahumma arhamma al-mu'minin wa al-mu'minat. Al-muslimin wa al-muslimat. Al-ahya'i minhum wa al-amwati wa arhamma rahmin Allahumma ifta' alayna futul arifin. Wa fiqna tawfiq salihin. Wa anfa'na lahum bil-Qur'ani wa dhikr al-Hakim. Allahumma la sahla illa ma ja'atuhu sahlan. Wa anta tajal hazna idha shita sahlan. اللهم أعذنا من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا واصلح أمورنا كله لا إله إلا أنت اللهم أرحم المؤمنين والمؤمنات المسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات يا رحم الراحمين اللهم كن معنا ولا تكن علينا أبدا يا رب العالمين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا إننا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لكنا من خاسرين ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وضريتنا قوة عين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم جعلنا من المخلصين اللهم جعلنا من المخلصين اللهم جعلنا من المخلصين وصل الله مع على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أقيم الصلاة يرحمني يرحمكم الله